hitting everybody i am mudassar mirza assistant professor of physiology and today i am going to discuss about cardiac cycle cyclic events which occur in the heart now in our day to day practice in a clinical practice i am uh, to be specific we auscultate the heart the patient and while auscultating the chest we hear first heart sound and second heart sound which are called as lub dub by lay, in late layman's terminology basically the phase of cardiac pump between first heart sound and second heart sound is systole and between second heart sound and first heart sound is diastole so this is what we are checking for whether how well the patient's heart is functioning by checking first heart sound and second heart sound now moving on to the contents of my lesson in today's class which i'll be discussing in detail what are the systole and diastole and how they occur in a cyclical manner the contents of my lesson are definition phases and duration of cardiac cycle basic principles involved in cardiac cycle description of various events using wigger's diagram biophysics of heart sounds and jugular venous pulse specific learning objectives of my class are at the end of the session student should be able to define cardiac cycle list the phases of cardiac cycle explain pressure volume changes and correlate them with ecg and heart sounds using wigger's diagram what is cardiac cycle by definition it is a sequence of electrical and mechanical events occurring during each beat moving on to the phases of the cardiac cycle now look at this graphic what do you see here is heart pumping the blood continuously or in phase wise manner look at this carefully now here we can see in this graphic that the heart is showing the myocardium of the heart is showing a phase of contraction and a phase of relaxation so hence the heart is pumping the blood in a phasic manner remember heart works continuously throughout our life the moment is it is formed till our death but it pumps the blood in a phasic manner in which it has got two phases first phase is the phase during which the myocardium contracts which is called as systole and the phase during which myocardium relaxes which is called as diastole now we know from our anatomy knowledge that heart consists of two muscles one on the top the superior muscle is the atrial muscle and the inferior muscle is the ventricular muscle separated by a fibromuscular ring henceforth the phase of cardiac cycle are divided as atrial systole atrial diastole ventricular systole and ventricular diastole again this ventricular systole and diastole are subdivided into isovolumetric contraction phase rapid ejection phase slow ejection phase and ventricular diastole is divided into isovolumetric relaxation rapid filling phase and slow filling phase as you can see here in this graphic in this graphic you can see that atria and ventricles are guarded by valves the valves which are guarding atria and ventricles are called as inlet valves whereas the valves which are guarding the ventricles and the greater arteries are called as outlet valves now these valves they open or close according to the pressure gradient and this pressure gradient is created by contraction of myocardium okay which causes the blood to flow from atria to the ventricles and from ventricles to different parts of the body or to the lungs via the greater arteries that is systemic artery and pulmonary artery closure of valves produces heart sounds yes closure of valves the av valves and semi lunar valves produces heart sound there are four types of heart sounds two are heard exclusively with stethoscope and other two are heard exclusively with phonocardiogram with phonocardiogram we can hear four heart sounds and with stethoscope we can hear only two heart sounds so first heart sound is produced by closure of av valve av valve which is long soft and low pitched its duration is 0.15 second which marks the beginning of systole second heart sound is generated by uh, closure of semilunar valves or valves across the ventricles and the greater vessels 
which is short and sharp which marks the end of systole and beginning of diastole third heart sound is produced by rapid filling phase of ventricles which is very low pitched which can be heard only with phonocardiogram fourth heart sounds is generated when the atria contracts which is again low pitched which occurs in late ventricular diastole just before the first heart sound that was about the biophysics of uh, heart sounds now let us see what are the biophysical principles behind murmurs normally when the blood flow is laminar non turbulent and silent below the critical velocity it doesn't produce any sound the moment blood flows turbulently it creates a abnormal sound which is called as murmur with the help of stethoscope with the help of stethoscope when we are auscultating the chest of our patients we can detect the abnormal leaks or abnormal flows across a closed valve in which there might be a backward flow which is called as regurgitation and also when the blood is flowing in jets across a narrowed valve which is called as stenotic valve stenotic lesion of the valve which also generates a murmur whenever the blood is flowing in form of jets it generates a turbulent flow which creates a murmur now this jet form or turbulent form of blood flow can occur in conditions like regurgitation stenosis of the valve and also if there are unfused interatrial septum or unfused interventricular septa which in layman's term are called as hole in the heart now these murmurs which are generated which are abnormal sound which are generated by turbulent flow of the blood if they are heard between first heart sound and second heart sound are called are classified as systolic murmurs and the murmurs which are heard between second heart sound and first heart sound are called as diastolic murmurs duration of each cardiac cycle is 0.8 seconds yes how do we get that number we know that normal heart rate is 75 beats per minute or 75 beats in 60 seconds we want to know the duration of each beat so we divide 60 divided by 75 which we get it as 0.8 seconds out of this 0.8 seconds the ventricular duration ventricular systole duration of ventricular systole is 0.3 second and duration of ventricular diastole is 0.5 second one question to all of you here is when the heart rate increases what happens is it beneficial yes or no i would i will answer that question after explaining the duration of different phases of the cardiac cycle now this 0.8 second uh, out of this 0.8 second i said ventricular systole lasts for about 0.3 second and ventricular diastole lasts for about 0.5 second in case of atria the atrial systole lasts for about 0.1 second whereas atrial diastole lasts for about 0.7 second now answer to my question when the heart rate increases what happens is when the heart rate increases that increase in heart rate is compensated by reduction in ventricular diastole so when a ventricular diastole that is a phase during which the filling of ventricles occurs is reduced so there is less amount of filling in the ventricles so less amount of filled blood is pumped so there is re relative reduction in the amount of blood pumped by the heart when the heart rate increases when compared to a normal beating heart normal uh, heart rate now when the heart rate is reduced as it occurs in athletes those who do regular exercise we see that there is a reduction in heart rate which is within physiological limits this condition is called as sinus bradycardia in sinus bradycardia what happens is as the heart rate is reduced what happens is the ventricular diastolic phase is prolonged which causes more and more filling and more and more amount of blood is pumped for better perfusion of exercising muscles this picture what you are seeing is a vigor diagram which was devised by carl vigor to explain cardi various cardiovascular uh, physiological parameters occurring during each cardiac cycle on x axis you can see there is a timeline which is uh, 
uh, which is uh, which is divided into different time segments in seconds and on y axis you can see the parameters like pressure changes volume changes venous pulse changes heart sounds and electrocardiogram another thing on the top of the x axis are the different phases of cardiac cycle that is atrial systole isovolumetric contraction rapid ejection phase reduced ejection phase isovolumetric uh, relaxation rapid uh, ventricular filling and reduced ventricular filling so these are the different phases which are being depicted in this figure diagram so this is one diagram which compares all the cardiovascular physiological parameters during each cardiac cycle or during each beat so in the top part of this diagram you can see a dotted line which shows the aortic pressure changes then you can see a dark red thick line which shows left ventricular pressure changes and at the bottom another dotted line is there which shows right atrial pressure changes below this is the ventricular volume changes this thick red line shows the ventricular volume changes below it is a blue line which depicts the recording of phonocardiogram next to it is the jugular venous pulse jugular venous pulse is the uh, pulse of pressure changes occurring in the right atrium which are reflected in internal jugular vein now when you see the internal jugular vein when, when we ask the subject to write recumbent position at an angle of 45 degrees we can see the waves in jugular vein adjacent to sternocleidomastoid and we see the following waves the a wave c wave and the v wave below this jugular venous pulse waves are the waves of ecg in correlation with the different phases of cardiac cycle now move now the first phase of cardiac cycle which i am going to describe is atrial systole during which the atria contract which lasts for about 0.1 second this atrial systole basically uh, occurs in the later part or in the end part of ventricular filling phase or ventricular diastole during ventricular diastole the av valves are open and whatever blood is coming via the venous return venous venous return blood whatever is there it directly enters ventricle passing via the atria by this passive filling about 80% of ventricular filling occurs but when the atria contract they cause only 20% of filling and when the atria are contracting they push the blood forwards towards the uh, ventricles producing a sound which is called as fourth heart sound which generates a fourth heart sound during atrial systole the left atrial pressure rises by 7 to 8 mm of mercury the left ventricular filling uh, left ventricular volume rises from 103 approximately 103 to 130 ml here you can see it rises from 103 to 130 ml we can see a a wave a wave due to atrial contraction in the jugular venous pulse now this atrial systole uh, in ecg can be seen from the peak of the p wave till the peak of qrs complex here you can see the atrial systole begins from the peak of the p wave to the peak of the qrs complex ventricles which causes the closure of av valves now coming to atrial diastole atrial diastole follows atrial systole during which atrial filling occurs atrial diastole occurs during during the ventricular diastole which lasts for about 0.7 second at the beginning of ventricular systole the bulging of av valves into the atrium results in production of c wave and at the same time during diastole there is a lot of venous return which directly rushes into the ventricles which again generates a rise in atrial pressure which generates a v wave in jugular venous pulse so these are the two events occurring in atrial diastole now we go on to ventricular events the first event in ventricular systole is isovolumetric contraction now at the beginning of this isovolumetric contraction in the ventricular systole what happens is there is fall in atrial pressure when the pre atrial pressure falls below the ventricular pressure the av valves close 
now the av valves are closed and at the same time the seminar semilunar valves are not open at this point the ventricular contraction begins now ventricular ventricles contract as a closed chamber without any change in the volume of blood inside them that is why this phase is called as isovolumetric contraction during this phase left ventricular pressure abruptly rises left ventricular pressure abruptly rises from 0 to 80 this is the isovolumetric phase which is lasting for about 0 0.05 second which rises from 0 to 80 or minimal not 0 minimal to 80 millimeters of mercury the volume of left ventricle remains steady at around 130 ml and the aortic pressure also is at 80 millimeters of mercury left atrial pressure at this point rises to 7 to 8 millimeters of mercury and right atrial pressure rises to about uh, 4 to 5 millimeters of mercury left ventricular pressure uh, as you can see here left ventricular pressure is rising from uh, minimal to 80 millimeters of mercury there is also rise in um, right ventricular pressure from minimal to 10 millimeters of mercury let me make it clear here that the left ventricular the main difference between right ventricle and left ventricle is in the pressures the right ventricle has very low pressure circulation whereas left ventricle has very high pressure circulation so the left ventricular pressure rises from basal value to 80 millimeters of mercury whereas in right ventricular right ventricle the pressure rises from basal to 10 millimeters of mercury only next there is no event uh, which can be co uh, correlated in JVP here you can see below it is the ECG how we can correlate and how we can objectively see in our patient the isovolumetric contraction so isovolumetric contraction corresponds with the peak of the QRS complex and the S wave now why I am specifically saying the corresponding uh, heart sounds and ECG is in our clinical practice we will be correlating these two things the heart sounds and the ECG with the different phases of cardiac cycle we can't write, right away open the chest and see how the heart is functioning but indirectly by seeing the ECG and heart sounds we are able to examine the how how well the uh, heart is functioning or what are the different phases going on inside the heart so in at the from the peak of the uh, QRS complex to the S wave is isovolumetric ejection phase and in this phase there is S1 at the beginning so moving on to rapid ejection phase now here the, uh, the uh, ventricles contract ventricle are contracting and the pressure in the left ventricles it rises from 80 to 120 and in right ventricles it rises from 10 to 25 millimeters of mercury now this rapid ejection phase lasts for about 0.11 seconds when this pressure rises more than 120 millimeters of mercury you can see here aortic valve aortic valve opens aortic valve opens in rapid ejection phase this is the rapid ejection phase which is lasting for about 0.11 seconds now here you can see the dark red line the pressure is rising above 120 from uh, 80 to 120 it is rising so when it is reaching the 120 the uh, semilunar valves open aortic valve or pulmonary valve in terms of right ventricular uh, pressure it rises from 10 to 25 millimeters of mercury and same happens when it rises up to 25 millimeters of mercury the pulmonary valves open now what happens there is rapid ejection of uh, blood into the iota so the left ventricular volume falls from left ventricle or right ventricle ventricular volume falls from 130 ml to 75 ml during this phase as there is contraction of ventricles there is rise in right atrial pressure 
which generates a C wave, C wave in jugular venous pulse. ECG is isoelectric and there is no heart sound heard. Now moving on to slow ejection phase. In slow ejection phase, there is fall in uh, uh, ventricular left ventricular pressure from 120 to a lesser value. Even in the right ventricular pressure uh, curve, there is fall from 25 to a lesser value during this slow ejection phase. A reduced ejection phase here it is labeled as reduced ejection phase which lasts for about 0.16 seconds now even though the blood pressure is falling sorry the ventricular pressure is falling the blood continues to flow into the iota this flow occurs due to the momentum inertia of momentum uh, which is which it has acquired during rapid ejection phase so here the well ventricular volume further falls from 75 ml to 50 ml so this reduced ej slow ejection phase is also called as reduced ejection phase there is not much change in right atrial pressure that's why we are not seeing any wave during the uh, uh, during the reduced ejection phase in jvp in ecg it corresponds with the t wave so t wave corresponds with reduced ejection phase so any abnormality in a reduced ejection phase might uh, cause changes in T wave. Now, when the uh, uh, ventricular pressure falls uh, steady below 120, there is closure of semilunar valves. That is when it falls below 120, it causes a closure of aortic valve and when it falls below uh, 25, it causes a closure of pulmonary valves. Now this closure of pulmonary valves at the end of reduced ejection phase produces second heart sounds, the beginning of second heart sound, which continues in isovolumetric relaxation phase, that is next phase. So in isovolumetric relaxation, which lasts for about 0 0.06 seconds, the atrial pressure, the pressures inside the left ventricle and the right ventricle further falls. Now during this phase, the semilunar valves are closed and atrioventricular valves are not open and heart starts relaxing so now as the heart is relaxing as a closed chamber without any change in volume it is called as isovolumetric relaxation the aortic pressure also falls during this phase from 120 to approximately 100 there is no change in the left ventricular volume which is about uh, 50 ml here it is wrongly given sorry sorry for the uh, typing mistake here there is no change seen in jvp in the isovolumetric relaxation phase we can hear the second heart sound due to closure of semilunar valves and ecg in the ecg there is isoelectric line there is no electrical event which is depicted in ECG during isovolumetric relaxation. After isovolumetric relaxation, when the uh, ventricular pressure further falls, further falls, here you can see this red line, when this ventricular pressure further falls below the atrial pressure, below the atrial pressure, the AV valves open. Here, mitral valve open and on right side, bicuspid, uh, tricuspid valve opens okay so on left side mitral valve, op valve opens and on the right side tricuspid valve opens now here what happens there is rapid filling so as the ventricles are relaxing and av valves are open and uh, the atrial pressure is slightly higher than the ventricular pressure the blood rushes which leads to about filling of left ventricle which rises the left ventricular volume from 50 to 85 ml now the rushing of blood into the into the ventricles during this phase during this phase of rapid ventricular filling phase produces a sound which is called as third heart sound which can be heard only by phonocardiogram and in the ecg 
here again we see isoelectric line during this rapid filling phase now move now we come down to the last phase of ventricular systole that is slow filling phase now this slow filling phase it lasts for about 0.25 seconds and here you, we can see that there is further fall in left ventricular pressure and also left atrial pressure the aortic pressure at the same time continues to fall but what we can see here is there is rise in slow rise in left ventricular volume which reaches 130 ml that is end diastolic volume as there are no changes in right atrial pressure we are not seeing any wave in jugular venous pulse ECG also shows isoelectric line and we don't hear any heart sound during this phase this completes the, the description of uh, various phases of cardiac cycle till now I have explained what are the pressure changes volume changes and how these are correspondingly changing with uh, the electrical events so how the mechanical events and electrical events are changing just now till now I have explained beyond this I will be discussing the different pressure changes what is the difference between right atrial right left right side and the left side what are the mechanical differences and few uh, other objectives which are discussed in KNR University first and foremost the jugular venous pulse the jugular venous pulse is the pulse pulse of the pressure changes in the right atrium reflected in internal jugular vein so this is the internal jugular vein and on examination we see the jugular vein on the just lateral to sternocleidomastoid and we are the subject to recline at 45 degrees uh, angle we can see this JVP when we see this JVP we measure what is the pressure in it and also we see for the waves so there are three types of ascent waves A wave V wave and the C wave A wave C wave and the V wave A A stands for atrial contraction C stands for contraction of the ventricles CC that's how we can remember V is venous return so V wave represents the venous return V V venous return CC contraction of the ventricles C wave atrial contraction due to atria A wave now there are two descents X descent and the Y descent X descent is due to ventricular systole and Y descent occurs during ventricular diastole okay which is due to atrium emptying at the time of opening of tricuspid valve now moving on to pressure volume loop now this is the pressure volume loop it is a graph which compares the left ventricular pressure with the volume changes in the left ventricle basically it is uh, described and discussed to know whether there is any systolic dysfunction or diastolic dysfunction in this graph you can see that uh, the left ventricular volume is depicted on the x-axis and left ventricular pressure are depicted on the y-axis and when we plot the volume changes against the pressure we get a loop which is called as pressure volume loop now this has got a b segment b c segment c d segment d e segment and e f segment at the point a mitral valve opens and you can see from a b segment in the a b segment the there is not much change in the ventricular pressure there might be a slight fall in the uh, ventricular pressure but the volume increases from 50 ml to 70 ml in the bc segment there is very minute rise in the left ventricular pressure but the the volume increases the volume in the left ventricle increases from 70 to 120 okay so when it reaches point C this is called as end diastolic volume point and at this point mitral valve closes and as the mitral valve closes the heart undergoes isovolumetric contraction which rapidly increases the pressure so here you can see there is rapid rise in left ventricular pressure which rises from the basal value to about 80 when it reaches 80 and beyond that aortic valve open and the rapid ejection phase occurs 
so there is a reduction in left ventricular volume the left ventricular volume falls from uh, the end diastolic volume to about 75 at point e so d e represents a rapid ejection phase and e f represents the slow ejection phase in slow ejection phase you can see the left ventricular pressure is falling from uh, slightly above 120 to about 100 when it falls to 100 or less than uh, slightly less than the aortic pressure the aortic valve closes at point f after the aortic valve close and as the av valves are not open the heart relaxes without any change in the volume so there is no change in the volume here and as uh, heart is uh, relaxing as a closed, ch closed chamber it is called as isovolumetric relaxation so this f and a segment marks the isovolumetric relaxation phase in the isovolumetric relaxation phase the pressure left ventricular pressure rapidly falls from 100 to the basal value the point at which uh, to the point a so this completes the pressure volume loop now moving on to the systolic and diastolic dysfunctions so this uh, these two graphs are depicting the systolic and diast what happens to pressure volume loop in systolic and diastolic fun uh, dysfunction when systolic dysfunction occurs which is depicted on the uh, right side of sorry in the left of this graphic this is the left of this graphic in the left you can see the systolic dysfunction in which we can see that isovolumetric uh, pressure isovolumic pressure uh, loop this is isovolumic pressure loop shifts to right shifts to right so this isovolumic pressure shifts to right decreasing the stroke volume to a new point of c1 to d1 okay now on the right of this graphic we can see diastolic dysfunction when the diastolic dysfunction increases the end diastolic volume is reduced it shifts the diastolic pressure volume uh, loop upwards and to the left towards the left this reduces the stroke volume from point b and a to new point b hash and a hash okay that is about systolic and diastolic dysfunction now coming to the mechanical uh, events differences differences in mechanical events in left heart and the right heart as you can see here the right ventricle contracts like a bellow bellow okay and the left ventricle left ventricle it is circular okay so it contracts like a hand squeezing a tube tube of toothpaste okay so that is the main difference between right atrium and the left atrium and one more difference is, is that on uh, the right atrium the right atrium contracts before the left atrium but the left atrium left ventricle contracts before the right atrium that is why the closure of tricuspid valve on the right side occurs before the closure of uh, sorry mitral valve closes before the closure of tricuspid valve and uh, aortic valve closes slightly before the closure of pulmonary valve okay so the m1 is produced slightly before the t1 now closure of mi mitral valve and tricuspid valve produces first heart sound there is also a slight difference in production of this first heart sound very slight minute difference uh, which we might not see in normal individuals but in persons in whom the mitral valve is closing slightly more uh, before the closure of tricuspid valve it creates a difference creating a condition called as split in first heart sound normally what happens the mitral valve closes first so mitral component of first heart sound is heard first then the uh, tricuspid component of first heart sound is heard if the difference between these two increases in 
if the duration between these two increases when when they are closing the there occurs a splitting of first heart sound similarly with second heart sound second heart sound also has got two components aortic component and the pulmonary component the aortic valve closes before pulmonary valve closure now this produces the aortic uh, component of second heart sound to occur before slightly before pulmonary component when the duration between these two closures increases it generates a split split in the second heart sound so that is about the pathological condition normally there is no splitting of second heart sound but second heart sound has got two components aortic component and pulmonary component aortic component occurs prior to pulmonary component now moving on to the pressure change uh, comparison of pressure in the right and the left ventricle you can see on the top right side has got uh, 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 right atrial mean pressure is 2 mm of mercury whereas left atrial mean pressure is 8 mm of mercury left ventricle on the left side in uh, sorry on the right side in the right uh, side circulation in pulmonary circulation the mean arterial pressure is 15 systolic pressure is 25 by 8 mm of mercury whereas on systemic circulation the mean pressure is 95 mm of mercury systolic pressure is 130 and diastolic pressure is 80 mm of mercury now moving on to correlation of cardiac cycle with the pressure waves in aorta and other blood vessels which again is done using vigors diagram what we can see here is as the distance from the heart is increasing the pulse pressure in the lower vessels right from the pulse pressure of aorta thoracic aorta abdominal aorta and femoral aorta artery you can see that there is increase in pulse pressure and also the secondary oscillations here you can see the secondary oscillations are appearing in the arteries which are far away from the heart so that are those are the pressure wave changes which are occurring in aorta and other blood vessel in relation to cardiac cycle there is also you can see the dichrotic notch is shifting downwards downwards and in the in situra phase of the pulse wave in situra or down phase of the pulse wave that's all thank you for patient listening i'll be giving you the assignment please go through the assignment and answer the questions thank you